seven-step protocol for providing COVID-19 cleaning and disinfectant treatment. Hey, I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. See, I came up with this uh, seven-step protocol uh, for providing a COVID-19 cleaning and disinfectant treatment because I've seen so much different information uh, that was out there. And uh, also, you know, I really wanted to wait till because we kept on getting different information every day. And now I feel that we have a pretty good uh, process uh, for providing this service. So what I'm going to go over in my following videos or in this video is that you're going to see the seven steps. Uh, step number one is uh, our site risk assessment. Number two is plan your, uh, plan your approach and your procedures. Number three is a pre-cleaning. Number four is applying disinfectant. Number five is your final wipe down. Number six is the removal and proper disposal of PPE. Number seven, uh, post uh, visual inspection. So those are our seven steps that I'm gonna go through. So let's go ahead and review step number one, site risk assessment. So what you're gonna see is that, uh, here's the document that I have up here. This is the site risk assessment. And with this here, you know, you want to go ahead and think about uh, some questions and steps that you're going to take as you fill this thing out. So, for example, uh, some of the questions that you want to think about that will help you uh, complete the risk assessment uh, might be, uh, you know, when you get a phone call, you're going you're gonna to want to ask the person, you know, ask them who you're talking to, uh, the company they're with, a uh, phone number, an email. <clears throat> And then, you know, also you got you to talk about what kind of a treatment are you doing? You know, is this going to be a prevention, of a, a prevention disinfectant treatment? Or is it actually a, a confirmed case of COVID-19 that you're going to go in to clean? So you, you want to ask those questions. And you also got to find out, you know, what type of facility or home is it that we're going to go in and, and provide the treatment? You know, where is it going to take place? So, you know, the best thing to do is just to gather as much information as possible, uh, you know, about the, the, the known infectious agent that's involved. You know, in this case, obviously, it should be the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Uh, but we've got to ask all these good questions to know what we're dealing with. Um, you know, the other thing is that you have to identify other hazards. Because when you do go into a home or office, there may be other hazards that, that may come into play. So we have to identify those. You know, and those could be biological, they could be chemical, they could be physical. And on our, uh, on our uh, uh, site uh, risk assessment, we want to make sure that we document what those are. So you also have to, uh, you know, assess your risks associated with those hazards. Uh, uh, that's very, very important. Uh, document your, your assessment with all parties involved. So use this document and share it with your complete team. Uh, so you know, uh, you know, you've gone through, you've done your site assessment, and share all that information with everybody so everybody know, is on the same page, they know what to expect. Now the other thing that you got to do is that you got to determine your, your risk mitigation plan. You know, so in some cases you may be doing some, some uh, pre-biotesting, uh, meaning that you're just going to take an ATP meter and, and take some readings of how clean uh, surfaces are. So you may do that, you may do a pre-bio test, and then you'll be a, a doing a post-bio uh, test. But, you know, you got to remember that every situation is different. And so maybe for some of these, you might not be doing any bio testing. So keep that in mind, though. Now, something else, that, as I said earlier, you know, you may come across some other biologicals uh, that, that are uh, visual biologicals. And what I mean by that is that it could be vomit, it could be blood, it could be body fluids, uh, or something like that there. Now, if you do come across those things uh, in your, uh, your pre-site assessment, obviously uh, those are things that we're going to have to clean, clean up before we actually do our pre-cleaning. And I'll get into that later. But... Uh, so anyway, uh, you want to make sure that, uh, that we cover all the bases. So go ahead and uh, check out this video that I did explaining how uh, to complete the document. In this site or risk, risk assessment, what you want to do is that you want to list all the hazards and potential harm 
that may be on site. So that's what you'll do in this first column here. You know, so for example, maybe uh, maybe when you're doing your site uh, assessment, you're seeing something that could potentially, um, you know, cut uh, you know cut a glove open or or you know cut the PPE that you're wearing, you know, your gown or something. Well, you list it here. Then you'd uh, list you know the people that are at risk in the second column, and then. Um, you know, the risk before control, uh, we would have a likelihood and we want to score these. Uh, we have likelihood, severity, and then uh, risk uh, rating. So if you come down here, you can see that I've got different ratings for for the likelihood and severity. So uh, based off of what you're, what you're seeing, you can go ahead and rate that. Uh, you know, one, very unlikely, two, unlikely, three, possible, four, likely, very likely, and highly likely. So that's what we would do in this box here. We would actually put our rating, what we feel that is. So let's say for this one here, um, let's give it uh, a four. And if, uh, if we were to give that a four, then we move on to the next thing and we, we score our severity. The same thing, we're gonna go through it and you know, you know what's the chances of, it, uh, of, of something uh, happening. You know, so one very minor, you know, uh, uh, two uh, minor injury, three uh, time off injury, four is severe injury, uh, five fatal injury, and six multiple deaths. So that's what we want to do in this space here is we want to put our rating there. So and let's say for that there we had a, uh, a rating of a three. So in our risk rating what we would put there is uh, we would put the, the, the total of the two. So in this case it would be a seven. And now when you come down here and you look at the, the risk rating, uh, you'll see that from a one to seven is a low risk. So what you can do is you actually can fill in this green, this box here and make it green if you wanted to. So you know that it's a low risk. You can actually uh, you know, uh, use the same color code, put green in there and then low risk. Now you do the same thing for anything else. If you were to see anything else that could be a potential hazard or a harm. Uh, as we're walking through the facility. And again, list the person's name and score. Um, and then what you want to do is that you can go over here uh, and, and list, uh, um, you know, the, the controls that you put in place uh, to reduce the risk. So here, maybe what you'll put, uh, because we've seen that sharp, sharp object, is maybe we put a red flag on it or something so it's, for, so it's very easily noticed by people. So then again, what we'll do is we'll put our likelihood, uh, our score here of the likelihood and severity. And now since we put uh, control in place, obviously we know it's gonna be lower. So, uh, you know, we probably put a number of uh, one for likelihood and then for severity, um, you know, we could probably put a one for that too because we put a control in place. So our total risk uh, rating is a two there. So that's what you want to do. Just keep on, you know, go through and list all of your potential uh, hazards and potential harm that, that could happen. Uh, use the scoring that I have here uh, to, to score your likelihood and severity. And then for whatever reason, let's say uh, you decided uh, uh, when you did your walkthrough that there was a, a visible biological manner present. Uh, what that means is, was, you know, was there blood or uh, uh, body fluids uh, or a virus or a potential, you know, a potential uh, uh, hazard. And if there was, go ahead and check the box yes. Um, you know, and you could put a little note in here too that, uh, that it was a confirmed case of, of uh, COVID-19. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't complete that, then in the next line, just put in here a reason why it was not completed. And you can just say that, uh, you know, there was a, uh, there's none found and or uh, it wasn't a, a confirmed case, it was just a, a routine cleaning and disinfecting. Now, in some cases too, you may decide to do a biotest measurement reading. Um, and what that means is that you're gonna take an ATP meter and you're gonna measure the cleanliness of surfaces. So you do a pre-treating reading and then you do a post-treating reading. Now again, not all circumstances warrant that you're gonna have to do that. So. Uh, again, on the next line here, you can put the reason why it wasn't completed. So uh, that's all you have to do there. Then on the last line here, you want to put uh, who it was assessed by, the company, and the date.
So that would complete your, your risk assessment, uh, uh, your site uh, risk assessment. And now this here, you know, uh, you want to share this with everybody involved so everybody understands and uh, what the hazards may be uh, when they go in to clean this, uh, this location. Well, okay, for, well, hopefully that was helpful. So now you know how to fill out that, uh, that risk, uh, site risk assessment uh, document. So now let's move on to step two. Uh, here we, what we want to do is we want to have a plan. We've got to plan our approach and our procedures. So um, here's a, a, a four, uh, floor plan of a, of a facility. You know, and on that floor plan, what you're going to see is that I've got different uh, color-coded areas. I have a green area, I've got a, a yellow area, and then I've got a green uh, or a red area, I'm sorry. Uh, the, uh, the green area is your clear zone. Your transition area or your transition zone is the yellow area and your operating zone is the red area. And that's what I'll be talking about when, when I explain how, we, how we're going to do that, uh, uh, lay out our plan for that. So that's what's important about this step is that we have to determine you know, where we're going to enter the, enter the building or the home uh, and where we're going to exit at. Uh, very important. Uh, by having those, you know, it's going to make, uh, make our job a lot easier. Uh, some other things that we have to consider is when we're doing this, uh, when we're doing this plan is, is there electricity? You know, we got to have electricity. We've got to be able to see what we're doing. You know, is there running water in case we need water uh, to mix additional chemical or something? Um, you know, do we, do we have lighting? Um, you know, which is very important. You know, we, need, we may need electricity if we have a plug-in piece of equipment. Uh, you know, uh, like some of these foggers are. Um, but in any case, you know, we have to make sure that, uh, that we have these things. Now, uh, you know, another thing that we got to think about is when we're, when we're entering a, uh, a building or a room or a home is that we got to address the content. We have to know what's in there, you know, so, you know, do we have some things that, that uh, are going to be difficult to clean? Uh, some things that we don't want to clean? So we have to address that. And uh, you know, the other thing that you got to think about is you have to think about the direction of the airflow, you know, in the area, you know, that's very, very important, you know, because in some cases, let's say you've gone into a confirmed case uh, location and uh, you open up the doors and, and all you know now is that it has a positive pressure uh, that the air, you know, you get a gust of air coming, shooting back at, at you. Well, you know, you have to know these things because if it's a confirmed case, there's very likely that maybe the, that the, you know, the virus got airborne and now you've just let it off into another area uh, of a building or something. So keep that in mind, you know, uh, uh, about your airflow. And, uh, you know, especially if you're fogging, because if you're fogging, um, uh, you know, the thing is with fogging is that you, you build up this, uh, uh, the fog and uh, you know the disinfectant or the, the solution that you're using uh, can go into the HVAC system. So and if that's the case, you know uh, you don't want to contaminate other areas or have other issues that may that may come into play because of that. Okay. Now the other thing that we have to do is we have to have a plan for you know what kind of equipment that we need. You know, uh, especially you know our PPE. So, you know, is this a preventative uh, clean or is it a confirmed case? You know, so we have to know that because our PPE is very, very important. I always say that always treat every, uh, every job as a confirmed case. You, you just can't be safe enough. So meaning that, you know, you're going to need all, all of your PPE, your gowns, your booties, your, your mask, your face shields, you know, uh, goggles, everything, gloves. So. That's something I think is very, very important. You know, the other things that you've got to do is you've got to make sure that all your personnel have been properly trained, uh, you know, on how to take on and put off, uh, take off and put on your PPE. Uh, that's very, very important. You know, are we going to be using uh, reusable uh, gowns or are they going to be one-time use? You know, we have to know all that stuff. So, you know, because the other thing is, let's say it's a confirmed case that we're doing, um, uh, that we're going into and uh, you know we're using PPE 
uh, disposable PPE and uh, we have to assume that our gowns and, and our PPE is contaminated now with the virus uh, since we entered that space. Well, what do we do about waste management? You know, because we have to get rid of that. It's, it's, it's bio waste now, you know, because if there's a, if we even have a slight assumption that there's a virus on it, uh, we have to, you know, package it correctly and transport it correctly. And uh, in some areas, what you want to do is that you want to check with your, your uh, local city or state as far as what their regulations are on that. So let's go ahead and move on to step three, and that's, this is our pre-cleaning step. So again, you know, uh, I'm going to bring a, um, bring a floor plan back up on the screen. And uh, with this here, uh, with the floor plan, you can see that, uh, you know, uh, we've got our zones uh, and they're identified. And what we clearly got to do is that we have to make sure that uh, that uh, be, when we're doing our pre-cleaning, um, again, that uh, that we're going to put on our PPE, and uh, you know, in any case, we're going to do the the gown, the mask, uh, gloves, goggles, you know, the 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 whole uh, the whole package. Um, I think again, I think it's we're better to be safe than sorry. Uh, even if this was just a uh, if this was not a confirmed case, uh, uh, we still want to be safe than sorry. So and that's the first step that we do is that we would uh, go in and we would put on our PPE in the clear zone. Uh, so and your clear zone is the the green area. So there again, like I say, we're going to put on our suit, our gloves, mask, uh, safety goggles, face shield, and booties. Um, so and in this uh, in this chart, you can see that uh, the, the different uh, process that it is for for putting on PPE. So in our next step, step two, what we want to do is that we want to move through the transition zone, the yellow zone, into the operating zone, which is the red zone. And uh, I explain this even further in the video, so let's go ahead and watch the video. Okay, uh, you can see my arrow here. Uh, I'm going to start at this doorway, and I'm going to enter the operating zone. Uh, the oper operating zone is all of the areas uh, shaded in red. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to move through this office space uh, while I'm doing my cleaning uh, with my di disinfectant or with a uh, detergent cleaner. And I'm removing soils is what I'm doing. And I'm going to try to uh, uh, stay to the right, zigzag back and forth, work from side to side, and try to work my way around uh, the office. So here I'll start at the door. I'll come by the desk area here, and I'll do the desktop and uh, handles and things like that. Come over here to this desk and chair area, and uh, and I just uh, zigzag around the room here. I come through the doors. I come down the hallway, uh, wipe down anything that needs to be wiped down, and I go right into this office and uh, do my touch points in there, uh, and come out, move out, and go back into this office, and I just work my way around the office that way and going in and uh, waking down touch points and surfaces as I'm uh, moving through. Then I go into this office, and then I'll go into this here office, and then what I'll do is I'm going to zigzag across the hall, and I'm going to come into this office so I can get all the touch points in here, and then come move my way back out and head over this way into this office, and I'll continue down the right-hand side of the, uh, the uh, hallway. Uh, going into the offices and cleaning any touch points and surfaces that need to be cleaned down. I'll go into this one, and then what I'll do is I can uh, actually come here, and uh, you know this could be a stairwell or something that's here, uh, so I could actually go into the stairwell or I could go out the door here. But I don't want to leave out that door. I'm going to go out this the, the other door, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and circle around and come back into this office, clean all my touch points and surfaces. Same here, then I'm going to come through this doorway and I'm going to do the same thing, go into this office, clean touch points and surfaces, and then again, uh, this office, go in and clean touch points and surfaces, same thing here, and now when I exit this office, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay to the left, and I'm going to move around and go into this uh, cubicle area here and wipe all surfaces down. Uh, this here is probably a little kitchenette area where a break room type thing. You can see there's a sink and a stove and so on and so forth. So it's a little kitchen area. So I'd go in there and I'd wake down surfaces. Uh, and then I'd move through these doors and do this area here. It's probably a conference room of some sort, who knows. But uh, I'd go in there and wake down any surfaces that need to be wiped down. 
and I continue to stay to the left here and I come to the door, circle around, come back to this office, and then come back through and make my rounds to the, staying to the left, going to the offices and wiping down uh, surfaces and uh, touch points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself way, my way through this door uh, into this area here and uh, I'll be able to exit out this door here. So once I exit out that door, then I'll be able to uh, go into my uh, transition area, the yellow area, uh, to where uh, that's where I'll make my transition as to um, you know, removing some of my PPE and things like that there, and then stepping off into my uh, into my uh, clean zone or my safe zone. That's what I would do uh, when we're cleaning a facility or an office space. We always have to look at it and, and plan on how we're going to enter it, how we're going to exit it, and actually how we're going to clean it. So uh, we would use the same process with a person following behind me with either an electrostatic sprayer, a fogger, or a mister, and they'd be misting the entire, uh, the entire space in there. Um, and paying special attention to uh, touch surfaces and uh, areas that uh, uh, people can actually have uh, contact with. And they would just work their way around and take the same path that I did and come out the same door and use the same procedure. All right, so we've completed our pre-cleaning. Very, very important step. We have to pre-clean before we disinfect. So now let's move on to step four. This is applying our disinfectant. So again, I'm going to bring up the, the floor plan. So, you know, the thing that, that we have to think about uh, when we're applying our disinfectant is that we have to think about the spray pattern and the scope. Um, you know, it, it, it's really important to know what type of equipment that we're going to use. Are we going to use uh, an electrostatic sprayer, a sprayer, a mister, a fogger? You know, what is it that we're going to be using? You know, and we made this determination in our planning stage, so we know that what we're going to use. But those are just things that you have to think again. You know, again, are you going to be spraying uh, walls and ceilings or are you just going to be spraying touch points? Um, you know, you have to know this uh, before you even get, get going on the process. Um, and you also also have to remember to use the appropriate disinfectant that's applicable for the infection agent, infectious agent. You know, that's very important. We've got to make sure that we are using a product that will kill the COVID-19. And as, as you know, that there is a complete list uh, that you can see on the CDC website and on the janitorialstore.com. So very important, make sure that you select a good, uh, um, a good disinfectant. Now, the other thing is too, is that we wanna make sure that uh, uh, we consider our dwell, where, our dwell rates on the disinfectant that we're using. Now, some of these dwell weights, you can see that they, they'll go anywhere from 2 minutes to 5 minutes to 10 minutes. And the most common dwell time is, you know, 5 minutes. So, that's the thing is, uh, when we're disinfecting surfaces, we have to make sure that that surface stays wet enough, uh, uh, on the, sur the surface stays wet enough to uh, last that dwell time of the 5 minutes. We don't want it to dry out because then we'd have all kinds of issues. Um, you know, it could be, it could leave spotting, it could, uh, you know, it could uh, uh, dry out and leave a film or something. But in either case, uh, we got to make sure that it has the dwell time to kill, uh, to kill the virus. So the other thing that you have to take into consideration is, uh, with your disinfectant, is to make sure that it's safe on hard and soft surfaces. You know, I just can't stress that enough. Because, you know, some of these disinfectants, they have some high pH levels. Uh, you know, I've seen some that were 10, 11, you know, that's some pretty high pH levels. So, you know, uh, make sure you look into that. And uh, what I would suggest is that if you can find a neutral pH uh, uh, disinfectant, uh, good, because generally you're going to see that's, uh, that that's going to be a neutral pH. Or if you can find another disinfectant to where the, it's a pH of 8 or 9, uh, that's better than, better than those higher, you know, levels of 10, 11, uh, or 12. Uh, so, because when they're that high of alkaline, you know that they're going to be, they can do some real damage to some surfaces. And again, you have to remember that we're putting these, uh, putting this disinfectant on surfaces for, for long periods of time. So, you know, keep that in, in, into consideration when we're put, when we're spraying the disinfectant on surfaces, and especially if it's a reoccurring type of service, you know, what might that, what might happen to those surfaces uh, from applying, you know, 
the the solution you know day after day or you know every every third day so keep that in mind so you know one of the the, the disinfectants that uh, that is uh, recommended especially if you're doing electrostatic spray and you got a Viking sprayer uh, the one that they're recommending there is vital oxide and uh, you know that there has a coverage of a thousand square feet if sprayed uh, then 8,000 square feet of applied uh, an electrostatic sprayer or fogging device. So that's pretty good, but you know, uh, that's what they're recommending uh, to use it as a, a ready to use product uh, when you are doing your disinfecting. And uh, if you're doing any sanitation, uh, they're saying that you can use it uh, 9 to 1. Uh, so that's, that's really good, you know, that's for your everyday sanitation. Uh, the high traffic areas, you know, like uh, residential, commercial kitchens, bathrooms, and items uh, you know, like those, like the doorknobs and handrails and things like that there. And uh, it's selling for uh, about 37 well, about $38 plus tax uh, for a gallon. And um, uh, when you do it at, at the, the 9 to 1, you're going to see that uh, it'll be 14 ounces per gallon. So that'll make you 9 gallons of ready-to-use product, uh, which you, your ready-to-use cost is uh, $4.22. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, and... Uh, but that's one of the things you have to take into consideration, you know, is um, uh, what's your dilution ratio? You know, there's some uh, disinfectants out there that do have a, uh, a dilution ratio of a one ounce to a half ounce per gallon. So with those there, you're making, you know, 128 gallons or 256 gallons of ready-to-use product. So there's something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, but with the the victory sprayer, uh, that's what they're recommending uh, is that uh, is the uh, viral oxide. Um, so that's what you can do. And again, uh, with the viral oxide, uh, it's recommended that the surface has to stay wet between five to ten minutes, uh, depending on the surface. Uh, and the viral oxide has a pH of eight uh, eight to nine. So that's uh, you know that's about the same as a, as a disinfectant or a, a detergent cleaner. So. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, the video I did on uh, the route that you would take as you're disinfecting. Okay, this here would be the route that we would use to. Uh, um, this would be the route that we would use when we're going to apply our disinfectant. We're going to start at this area here. Uh, we're going to come from the clean zone, the green area, into the yellow zone, which is your transition zone into the operating uh, operation zone here so we follow the same route that we took when we did our uh, routine cleaning and uh, in this time here we're going to be applying disinfectant so uh, whatever method that you're using it could be an electrostatic sprayer could be a fogger could be a mister could be pump up sprayer whatever method you're using you could use the same route so we start at this doorway here, and again, we're going to go and make sure that we cover all touch points and surfaces uh, in the area. And again, we're just going to go through the doors, and we're going to go into the hallway, spray different areas, and then head into each office. And we're going to circle around the office area this way. And then when we get to here, what we'll do is we'll pop over this office here. Uh, so we get this one done and then when we come out we'll go back down the hallway and continue to stay to the right and uh, go into each office and spray that area and then we'll come down this hallway here to this back doorway spray the area and uh, then uh, we'll go ahead and come back and come into this uh, into this area here and then we're going to continue this is the bathroom uh, so um, We'll go in there, then we'll come into this other bathroom, uh, come through the doorway, uh, and come into this uh, restroom here, and uh, this office, this uh, office here, and then we're going to come back and come across over to the left-hand side, back over to this uh, kitchen area. Then once we get the kitchen area done, we'll go into this area here, which could be a conference room or whatever it may be. Then when we come back out, we'll stay to the left, and come down to the doorway here and circle and stay to the left and come into this office and work our way back to our exit point to where we come back into this space here and we'll actually end exit through this space here uh, in which we're going to go back into our transition zone uh, and in that transition zone that's where we would probably uh, uh, 
um, remove our PPE um, and items like that and make sure we put them in a, in a bag and, and so on and so forth, then uh, go into the uh, clean zone uh, to exit the space. So that's what you would do is uh, when you're applying your disinfectant. Like I say, it doesn't matter what method you're using. Uh, you would just follow a route and have a predetermined route that you would take uh, to do this step. Well, there you have it. That's your, that's your process for uh, applying your disinfectant. So uh, hopefully that was clear to everybody. And uh, hopefully the step was uh, uh, simple, em uh, simple enough to where uh, it can be performed with uh, no, no issues. So now let's go ahead and take a look at number, uh, step number five. And this here is your final wipe down. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the floor plan. And uh, in this step, you know, your cleaning technicians uh, would use paper towels or microfiber cloths to wipe down surfaces after the dwell time has expired for the disinfectant. So that's very, very important. We got to make sure, that, again, that we meet our dwell times. Uh, I think there's a lot of cleaning companies out there that are not uh, allowing the, the allotted dwell time to make sure that they killed, killed the virus. Um, but in any case, that's what, that's what we always got to keep in mind. Now, here's something that you may do. This is a little tip, uh, and, uh, and I'll talk about it in the, in the video. So uh, let's go ahead and watch the video. Uh, here you can use uh, multiple technicians uh, to wipe down areas. On our final wipe down pass, uh, our route would be the same as we used for the pre-clean and for the disinfecting. So we generally start at this main doorway that we started at, uh, just like the other passes. Now one thing that we may do here, we may have multiple technicians uh, that are responsible for specific items to wake down. Um, so for example, maybe you have technician one, they'll go right away and they'll head right over to the bathrooms and they're going to be cleaning, uh, wiping down the bathrooms after the disinfectant has, uh, has a, a lot of dwell time then they may go into the kitchen areas or break rooms. So that's what that technician one would do. Tech, <clears throat> technician two, uh, they could be responsible for desktops, drawer handles, tables, and chairs. And so that's what they would focus on. They would start here and they, they'd just go ahead and make the route, just like they did uh, the, the other, uh, in the other sequences. Technician three, uh, they could be uh, wiping down doorways, uh, filing cabinets, push uh, door push plates, so that's what they could do. Technician four, they could actually be doing wiping down uh, any electronic equipment or copy machines, hole punches, and they could be responsible for wiping down door handles and light switches because uh, we'd have our the last technician uh, do those last passes uh, during that last um, that last route. Uh, they'd be following up behind everybody, so they'd be definitely doing the door, door handles and light switches as they make their route around the office to clean all those areas that apply to them. And eventually, again, like I said, they would, they would go through the route and they'd eventually come out this, this doorway. So all of your technicians would eventually leave, the, leave at this doorway and going to the transition area, and in the transition area, you'd have an area where it's set up for them to uh, to remove their PPE and uh, put it in uh, biohazard bags or uh, in a uh, bag that were in which it would be uh, laundered uh, if you're using uh, uh, reusable um, gowns and stuff. And then they move into the clean uh, the clean zone. But uh, that would be about all you'd have to do. Um, so. You know, give that some thought, and again, that's why you want to have some kind of a plan as to how you're going to attack this, so it goes smoothly, and uh, and and uh, you're doing it in the most efficient manner. Well, there you go. That was your final wipe down. Um, so that was your fifth step. Uh, so now, after the final wipe down, uh, we have two more steps left. So, uh, step number six is the removal and proper disposal of PPE. So, uh, you know, take a look at these charts that I got here. And, you know, these uh, charts are for, uh, for uh, putting on and, and taking off PPE. So, and that's referred to as donning and doffing. Um, but, you know, it's very, very important that all your employees know uh, how to put on and take off your, their PPE. And uh, I would suggest that you actually, uh, 
you know, do some, uh, do some uh, uh, testing on this. Uh, you know, and just do some training to where you're you're putting it on, taking it off, and and you're you're watching and instructing them as to what is the the proper method or the proper sequence in in which they should be putting it on and taking it off. Again, you know, it's very very important that that uh, that uh, uh, the the PPE is uh, taken off properly. Now, here's something that we have to remember, and I talked about this earlier is that uh, you know if you suspect the PPE uh, to be contaminated with COVID-19 well then we have to make sure that we manage it as medical uh, uh, as medical waste and uh, you know it has to be contained in a manner to protect the the waste handlers and the public from uh, con uh, contracting the disease you know so that's a that's a real issue so uh, you know, you have to help uh, to prevent exposure to medical waste. Uh, OSHA states that workers should use appropriate engineering and administrative co uh, controls uh, and safe work habits and PPE. You know, that really uh, is really a no-brainer. So the thing is, is that we have to make sure that if we've, uh, if we've done a location that is a confirmed case of COVID-19, then we have to suspect that our PPE is contaminated. No question about it. And if that's the case, then you know we need to make sure that it is uh, properly labeled as a biohazard uh, waste. You know it has to have a sign, a biohazard symbol, and it has to be uh, disposed of uh, in accordance to the, to the infectious waste management regulations. And uh, you know that's very very important. So that's where it's going to add costs to your job. And I think that's where a lot of these companies aren't thinking about this. I think some of these companies that are going out and cleaning up some of these confirmed cases uh, aren't even thinking about the PPE, that it's contaminated and they're not uh, disposing of it properly, which could land them you know, with fines and other penalties. So uh, I just want to make sure everybody's aware that, you know, okay, we have to be conscious of this. So, you know, that's the thing is that uh, infectious waste should be managed in accordance with your local uh, and state regulations. Uh, you can always visit the Waste Management Agency's website for specific guidelines. And that's what you really want to do. Uh, you know, you, you got to make sure what the regulations are in your city and state. Uh, so, so do that. And, uh, and then you'll be fine. Okay, here we are. We're on our last step. Step seven. So and this is our post-visual inspection. You know, and it's very, very important that we do a post-visual inspection. And, you know, what you're going to do is you're going to use this document. You know, this is the one I got in my hand here. I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen. And, you know, uh, that's what you're doing is in this final uh, uh, visual inspection, we just want to make sure that the scope of work has been met. So uh, let's go ahead and watch the video that I did on this, uh, on how to complete this, uh, this document. Well, okay, this is our, our post-visual uh, inspection document. And what we're doing here is that we're going to go through and we're walking through the facility just to make sure that everything is, is done to uh, meet the scope of work. Uh, so we're going to be walking through areas and we're going to be checking off that they have been completed. And what we're looking for is anything that uh, might have not got cleaned well or has smears on it and things like that. Uh, so we'll just walk the facility and we'll just check it off uh, saying that it's done. Now this uh, also is a time if, you, if you're doing any bio tests. Uh, to do your post bio test uh, uh, measurements here. So as you want going through, just go ahead and write down, write them down. And then also we're checking out our touch points, making sure the door handles, door jams, and other things like that there have been cleaned and, and disinfected. We check them off. And again, we do our post bio test readings here. Uh, then we have some, uh, we want to make sure that we completed all of our post uh, operation documents. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a client satisfaction sheet. Uh, we've got to make sure that they've signed off on that. If they have, go ahead and check the box. The same thing is true as if we did any of our biotesting and uh, pre and uh, post biotesting. Uh, that's what we would do here. But, you know, uh, you may not have done that, and that would have shown off uh, in your, uh, in your uh, pre site uh, uh, assessment. Also, if there was any orders, we want to address them and uh, make sure that they've been uh, taken care of and we just go ahead and check the box. Our, our waste management, uh, you know, here what we're talking about is uh, if there was any uh, bile waste, you know, from uh, maybe vomit or uh, body fluids or blood or something like that there that we had to clean 
up uh, ahead of time uh, before we did our pre-cleaning uh, to make sure that it was packaged and labeled correctly. And the same thing applies for our PPE. If we're gone into a confirmed uh, location with COVID-19, uh, that means that the virus is, was present, uh, more, more likely our uh, PPE, our gowns and stuff are uh, contaminated and those need to be uh, packaged and, and uh, labeled for transport also, unless you're using uh, washable, uh, washable gowns and stuff. In any, in any way, uh, you just, uh, if it's completed, go ahead and check the box. And then uh, last, uh, what you always want to do is that you always want to uh, review the process, uh, you know, and see if there's anything that can be improved or if there's lessons that were learned from this, uh, from this job. And uh, again, just check the box and uh, make sure that you talk about, uh, you know, talk about this, any lessons learned and stuff with everybody that's, that was uh, involved. And uh, the, the last line is, you know, go ahead and sign it by who, who completed the report and date it. And that's all you have to do. Okay, there you have it. Those are the seven steps. That's the protocol I put together for, for you to provide COVID-19 cleaning and disinfecting uh, treatment. Now, something else uh, that, you, that you also need is that you need a proposal. So if you go to the janitorialstore.com and you go into bidding, uh, the download library into the bidding and estimating, you'll see that I, I actually have a proposal there for uh, disinfecting treatment. And um, uh, that there document is a multi-page document. Uh, it's, it's actually, you know, like I say, it's a proposal. So uh, once you have uh, uh, met with somebody and you've discussed uh, what you may do, you may put a proposal together for them and you can give them, give them that proposal. But it checks all the boxes. Uh, uh, but uh, go to the download library and you can, you can check it out. And uh, that'll be a great add-on uh, for you to provide this type of service and close more deals. So hopefully you found this, uh, this video helpful. Uh, I think if you were to follow this protocol, uh, you should have no issues whatsoever uh, um, uh, for providing this type of service. So uh, thanks for watching. And again, um, you know, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully this was helpful to you.